everyone, it's Tony with Hidden Light Photography. And today, we're gonna to be talking about something that is so easy to overlook, yet so powerful at the same time, file structure. As astrophotographers, we deal with hundreds, sometimes thousands of images per target, especially when you consider calibration frames. Now, one-shot color does make life a little bit easier since we're capturing all of the colors at the same time. But when you consider multi-night imaging, things can get messy fast. If everything ends up in one folder or without structure, you have lights, darks, flats, flat darks all mixed together, and you need to figure out which ones match each other. And then let's throw in a mosaic. Now you need to figure out which ones go to which panel and which night. And if you're capturing mono, now you're juggling luminance, red, green, blue, hydrogen, sulfur, oxygen, and matching each of those not just to the right night, but also to the right panel if you're doing a mosaic. It gets out of control real quick. But if you have a structure, everything falls into place. Each frame has its home, labeled by night, panel, and filter. Structure doesn't just keep you organized, it keeps you consistent. It means you can come back months or even years later and instantly know exactly where you left off, ready to add data or jump into reprocessing. And here's the best part. File structure isn't one size fits all. Even if you don't use my exact method, if this video sparks an idea for you to create a system of your own, that's a win. And to give you a head start, I've created pre-built file structures one-shot color, mono, even mosaics, and they're available as free zip downloads on my website. And I'm gonna go over those at the end of this video so you know exactly what you're looking at. And if you find this video useful, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. I don't want you to miss out on any useful information. Now let's jump in and talk file structure. When thinking about file structure, it's easiest to think of file structure like layers. At the very top layer, you've got the broadest category. Each layer below it gets more specific until you're right down to the exact frames. Now this might get a little bit confusing, so stay with me because we're gonna take a look at the exact structure in a moment. But first, let's break it down. The top layer, layer one, is always your target name. This tells you what data set you're working with. From there, layer two depends on what kind of project you're doing. If it's a single night one-shot color project, you go straight to folders for lights, darks, flats, and flat darks, what I'll call frame types. If it's multi-night one-shot color, layer two becomes your nights, night one, night two, night three, and so on. If you're shooting mono, Layer two is your filters. Luminance, red, green, blue, hydrogen alpha, sulfur two, and oxygen three, whichever ones you're using. If it's a mosaic, then layer two becomes your panels. Now for layer three. Layer three lives inside the layer two folders. Layer three simply breaks down what you already have in layer two. For example, one-shot color mosaic, panels become either nights or frame types depending on if you're imaging multi-night or single night per panel. Nights become frame types. For mono mosaic, panels become filters. Filters become either nights or frame types depending on if you're imaging multi-night or single night. The point is, you always start broad and work your way down. Target can be broken down into nights or panels. Nights or panels can be broken down into filters, which can be broken down into frame types. By thinking in layers, you never get lost and your files will always make sense to you later, even months or years down the road. Now let's take a look at the actual structure. Here I have several examples. Now normally I would have just the target name, 
but I want you to see what each one is. Let's start with One Shot Color Single Night. Now keep in mind, One Shot Color captures all colors in one go. Starting with layer one, we have our target name. And if we click into layer one, our next broadest category, since One Shot Color captures all colors in one go, and we're doing a single night, our broadest category is gonna be the frame types. Light, flat, dark, flat, and dark. Now within each frame type folder, we would have our actual light frames, flat dark frames, flat frames, and dark frames. Moving on to one shot color multi-night. Again, layer one is gonna be our target name, NGC 7000. And if we click into layer one, our broadest category, since we're imaging over multiple nights, is gonna be the nights. Now we can have as many nights as we need to complete the project. And then when we click into each night folder, since we're imaging in one shot color, the next broadest category is gonna be our frame types. Moving on to one shot color mosaic, again, layer one is gonna be our target name. When we click into layer one, our next broadest category is gonna be the panels of the mosaic. Now we can have as many panels as we need to complete the project. And within each panel folder, our broadest category is gonna depend if we're imaging each panel over one night or multiple nights. If we're imaging each panel in one night, our broadest category would be the frame types. In this example, we're doing multiple nights for each panel. So the broadest category will be nights. Within each night folder, we have our frame types. Now let's take a look at mono. Let's say we wanted to do mono over a single night. Layer one will be our target name. And then within layer one, we have our filters. Now with mono, each color is captured individually using filters. So our broadest category would be filters. Now here we would have the filters that we're using for the project, but within each filter, we have our frame types. Now moving on to mono multi-night, layer one will be our target name. And then if we click into layer one, our broadest category is still filters. Now the reason for that is each filter can still be imaged over multiple nights. In other words, each filter can be broken down further into individual nights. Now within our filters folder, since we're doing multiple nights, our broadest category is going to be nights. And then within each night folder, and keep in mind, we can have as many nights as we need, but within each night folder, we have the frame types. And finally, doing a mosaic with mono, layer one is our target name. Within layer one, the broadest category is going to be the panels. Now again, we can have as many panels as we need to complete the project. Within each panel, our broadest category is gonna be filters. And that's because the filters can be broken down further into nights. Within each filter folder, just like one shot color, this will depend if you're doing a single night per panel or multiple nights. If you're doing a single night per filter per panel, your broadest category would be frame types. If you're doing multiple nights, like in this example, per filter per panel, then you would have nights. And then within each night folder, we have the frame types. So now visualizing it, as you can see, if a category can be broken down into smaller pieces, 
then that category is your broadest category. Not only does file structure help with organization and consistency, it also helps speed up pre-processing. For example, with WBPP, if we go into directory, here we see Oxygen 3 has two nights. If we just go ahead and simply select Oxygen 3 and hit select folder, WBPP pulls all of the files from our Oxygen 3 folder and pulls them in to the lights category, flats, and darks, and then also has our flat darks. But again, remember we had two nights. We simply come over here and since we had nights already built into the file structure, we simply type in night, hit the plus sign, and WBPP can automatically separate everything into its individual nights. And under the calibration tab, we see that all of our calibration frames are perfectly matched to each other. Now, a couple of helpful tips. When you get your file structure set up, and then you hop into, let's say, Nina, and then you plan and build your sequence, what you can do is save the sequence, and then you can go into wherever you have your file structure set up. We'll take this for example. We'll head into NGC 7000, and then we can save it. Now, let's say you're doing a mosaic. And we'll go into framing over here. And let's say you want to remember or kind of visualize how your panels are built, where they go. You can grab a screenshot of this and then save it within your file structure folder as well. So if we go into my file structure folder here for NGC 7000, I have my sequence, which after each night, I'll go ahead and save it so I can pick up right where I left off. But also what this does is it keeps the sequence safe. So let's say I wanted to go back at a point in the future, I can just pull up the same sequence and run it again. And then when you save your screenshot of the mosaic, you can just go ahead and bring it up so when you're actually processing, you can see, okay, panel one went here, panel two, so on and so forth. So just a quick, easy way to kind of remember how you structured your mosaic. For my downloadable file structures, simply head over to my website, hiddenlight-photography.com, and head into Downloads. Scroll down just a little bit, and what you'll find is Downloadable File Structures. I have a brief set of instructions on how to download and extract the file. And then I also have a brief description on each one. What you'll notice is these are the exact file structures that we went over in the video. Once you find the structure that you want, simply click on the button and then click download. This will download it right onto your computer. For Windows users, this should end up in your downloads folder. What I recommend is either copying or cutting the zip file that downloaded and move it into a permanent home. Once you have the zip file in its permanent home, somewhere that you can easily find it, simply go ahead and right click on the zip file, click extract all, and then click extract. In the folder that you put it in, you'll notice that you'll have the extracted file and the zipped file. You're welcome to just go ahead and delete the zip file. And what you're left with is a file structure that's ready for you to use or modify and make your own. So I hope you found this video useful. And if you did and want to help support the channel, check out that join button and consider joining a Hidden Light Photography membership. There's lots of perks in it for you and your support helps me bring you more content. Another way you can help support the channel is checking out my High Point Scientific Affiliate link if you're in the market for some new gear. 
It doesn't cost you anything extra, and the support helps me keep the channel growing. Also, do me a favor. That channel icon that popped up? Hit that channel icon and subscribe. I don't want you to miss out on any useful information. Drop a comment in the comment section. How do you organize your files? Did you find this video useful or have any questions? And then, check out that next video. Until the next time, clear skies.